Hi, so in this video I want to show you how to set up a DNS server within a VM uh, that, is, that belongs to a virtual network. So I have a VM here and I'm going to put the DNS service on here such that all of these other uh, VMs here can actually look up the host name or the domain name of the servers and refer to each other. So the way to do that is um, I have this VM and I'm going to bring up the virtual machine here. So I have the virtual machine here, and I've already set up the DNS, and I'm gonna show you the steps to do it. So uh, within Service Manager, if I scroll all the way down to where the uh, roles and features are, and I do uh, task, add roles and features, you'll notice, um, and again, I already have the DNS set up, so I'm just gonna hit next, 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 and I'm gonna show you where to find the um, DNS and also the wins service. So uh, this is uh, I'm just uh, selecting the server that I'm on and where where I want to actually uh, install all of this. So here you'll notice I have the DNS server already installed. So you'll find that in server roles. Just check that. And when you click next, you'll also want to check uh, the wins service here or the Win server. So I have Win server checked. So I already installed everything. And the DNS is for the domain name resolution, whereas the Wins is actually for um, the NetBIOS name. So the NetBIOS name is kind of like the Windows name, whereas the DNS name is the uh, complete um, so sort of domain name like uh, uh, server1. Um, uh, google.com or server2.microsoft.cn.com uh, uh, for example. So um, I want to set up a DNS server that is internal and can resolve all of these uh, internal names. So I've already set that up. So one, one of the things Microsoft says it requires is that they the DNS has to be dynamically updatable. So um, once, once you have that installed, uh, you do have to configure it a little bit. So uh, what you're going to have to do is either go and search for DNS Manager after you have it installed. So I'm going to bring it up here. And uh, just wait one second here. So, um, so once you have that brought up, the DNS manager, um, if you highlight the DNS, you're gonna have to click properties. And one of the things you have to do is set up the forwarders. So the, the first thing you have to do before you even install the DNS server is to actually create a static IP for this server. So in another video I already showed you how to create a static IP. Refer to that video on how to uh, create a static IP for the server. Um, and there's other configurations you're gonna have to do in Azure and I'm gonna show you that uh, in the latter steps and I'm gonna have all of these steps in the about section. So um, right now once once you have the DNS set up um, now th this is going to be uh, the DNS resolution for your internal network. So my IP for this server is 10.1.1.10 and um, I'm going to have to set up a forwarder and this forwarder uh, is the public uh, DNS for Google 8.8.8.8 so remember to set that up go into uh, the DNS manager and then select your DNS server and click properties and under forwarders make sure to enter in 8.8.8.8 which is universally the uh, public DNS uh, server for Google and the reason why you want to do that is um, all the external internet addresses will be resolved through this DNS server whereas all your internal um, IP addresses to domain name mappings will be resolved in the DNS server you just created. So for example, um, I have two servers that 
registered uh, dynamically itself here. So my my uh, domain name here is Bev10. So you'll notice I have two servers here, actually three servers here that dynamically registered. Uh, so these names would be resolved uh, through this DNS, and you'll you'll notice. Um, this is the complete domain name. So if I type this in uh, Windows, it'll actually resolve it to the that uh, server. Or if if I type this in, it'll actually resolve also. Um, so these are the three servers that I have. And what you do want to do is you want to double check. By default, I believe this is the uh, default that you could actually dynamically update. So as you can see, if I went here and I click on the forwarding and I expand it and I go to the domain, uh, sort of, um, and then I um, check here the dynamic updates. Just make sure it's secure only, or if if you prefer non-secure and secure, just make sure that's the setting. And so um, when 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 you when you have a certain kind of computers on the network uh, actually look up the DNS its host name would actually be in here so it'll it'll auto update this uh, DNS uh, if you give it the secure permission um, so that's really it for setting up the uh, DNS which is how you would set it up to begin with um, and remember I'm, I'm coming at this from kind of a developers perspective so all I want to do is set up my development environment or my QA environment or my DR environment or staging environment such that um, all my applications at the database tier uh, app tier and web tier can actually talk to each other so that's my purpose here um, so this is how you would normally set up a DNS as far as I know um, with or without Azure. Um, so this computer or this VM is actually already in my uh, virtual network and again uh, I have another video that shows you how to put this VM into this virtual network that I've set up. So once you have this DNS set up uh, you have to go back to Azure and this is the big step here. If you go back to Azure um, and go to Networks, so I'm going to click over to Networks, and this is the this is the virtual network where I have my VMs. So if I it's a V Network dash Bev10. So if I go to the dashboard here, you notice I have a bunch of vir virtual machines that I put into this V Network. Uh, Bev10 virtual network and what I have to do is configure the DNS so I'm gonna click configure here after I've gone into this virtual network that I created and I add the machine name of my DNS so if I go back to my VM here this the VM where my DNS lives is called Bev10-DB1 um, I'm actually using this uh, VM uh, for multi-purpose uh, but that's the name of my VM and this is the IP address and um, you, you'll notice here I have the Google DNS this actually does nothing um, if if this was offline it would not be able to resolve internal names it would just use my Google DNS here to resolve all the external um, you know Microsoft.com, Yahoo.com, and all of that other external uh, domain names. But so this first entry here that you see is the utmost importance. So once once you've done that, there's going to be button in the bottom here that says save. Uh, make sure ma make sure you actually yeah you see there's this button here that says save. Um, so make sure you click save, and it's going to take a couple of minutes maybe five ten minutes to refresh the virtual network and once the virtual network is 
uh, kind of uh, refreshed you're gonna have to restart your VMs so that the uh, network settings so what once you do that and that's the big step th that I showed you before that actually configures the DNS uh, within Azure um, and remember this is only after you've set up a static domain and you've set up your virtual network um, and you've put your VM into a virtual network and I have uh, all three of those um, creating a static IP, creating a virtual network, creating a VM and putting it in a virtual network are all separate videos that I have um, that you could look up um, so um, but that's really it that's what you do so uh, if I go back to my VM here and I do IP config you, you'll notice uh, these are the DNS servers in that particular order uh, that uh, gets configured when it uh, when when the server reboots so remember you'll, you'll have to reboot the other uh, VMs in order for the settings to uh, uh, appear kind of uh, on your VM uh, let's see let me bring that back up so if you remember those couple of settings is under networks and if I choose my virtual network and I go to configure again uh, this the these these uh, two IPs here that you see the 10 1 1 10 and the 8 8 8 8 is what you see here so but there you go those are the steps to actually setting up a DNS within your virtual network and having all your uh, VMs within the virtual network be able to talk to each other and register their host names and all of that so all right um, and actually uh, also uh, most importantly this this allows you to when, when you're adding the machine or adding a VM to your domain within the same virtual network that it actually is able to find the domain um, the domain controller so all right uh, thank you for watching and um, I hope this helps you and I hope it wasn't too confusing all right thank you very much